Hello, everyone. Um, thanks, Kelsey, for the introduction. So I'm going to give an overview of the wavefront sensing test bed we're developing at the Starfire Optical Range. Oops. Sorry, I'm in the wrong. OK. So uh, this is a list of the collaborators. And so the audience over here already knows um, that the Shaq Hartman wavefront sensor, though, has a long, um, high dynamic range and correct, can correct a high dynamic range. It doesn't do well um, correcting low order modes, mainly because it cannot interfere light beyond uh, the sub apertures, which divide up the pupil. So Olivier Guillaume in, um, I believe, 2005 or 2009 came up with the nonlinear curvature wavefront sensors, which allows you to extract information from light propagated from the pupil to Fresnel planes. And um, from there, you can extract the information from speckles. So you're extracting information from a lambda over D um, at the lambda over D resolution instead of a lambda over R naught. So uh, what you see over here is um, the pupil plane um, amplitude shown in various Fresnel planes, um, showing the ev evolution and diffraction of the speckle pattern from which information is then extracted. So um, back in 2015, we did, a, we did a comparison to see how well each of the wavefront sensor can um, extract, um, can reconstruct each mode. And so this plot over here shows um, spatial frequencies plotted on the x-axis and the number of photons required to reconstruct each, which is um, in essence saying how sensitive the waveform sensor is. And um, the green plot, um, the green line is the shaq hartman waveform sensor and the red one is a nonlinear curvature waveform sensor. And you see that the um, shaq hartman wavefront sensor for about the first 10 modes requires more photons than the nonlinear uh, curvature wavefront sensor. And at the lowest order modes, it requires about 100 times more photons. This translates to a delta mag of five um, if you're trying to do um, high contrast in this room. So uh, that uh, reconstruction algorithm is based on the Shaq Hartman wavefront sensor, and I'll just play this um, movie to show how it, uh, the gershberg saxton algorithm works. So the top row over here is the amplitude, pupil plane, and then various Fresnel plane, and then the reconstruction taking place per iteration. The second row is the phase in the pupil plane and the evolution um, of the extracted phase per um, for an L plane and the reconstruction. The bottom three images show the pupil plane, the reconstruction, and the residual. Um, and you'll see the residual gets smaller and smaller as the reconstruction algorithm completes. And over here, I'm showing about 20 iterations. So um, as you know, this is an iterative method. So it's a very slow and it's, um, it cannot be done real time, um, cannot be used, for instance, on sorry, kilohertz speed. So um, we presented a paper, it was, uh, the first author was Joanne and Cardona on um, developing a faster reconstructor algorithm. And we presented this at the SPA in 2018, which, um, well, I'll let you uh, refer to that um, to save time. It, um, it, it's, not, it's a non-iterative method and extracts these speckles and uh, does SVD to reconstruct the wavefront. So um, also we're developing um, in the wavefront sensor comparison testbed, we are also looking at comparing the pyramid wavefront sensor with the Shaq Hartman wavefront sensor. So in all cases, the Shaq Hartman sensor has been uh, around for a long time and is widely used. We use it as a ground truth to compare other wavefront sensors. It. So here you see calibration plots for the fixed pyramid wavefront sensor and the modulated pyramid wavefront sensor, and also um, calibration plots to the Shaq, for the Shaq Hartman to determine what the linear range of each is for a particular geometry of each wavefront sensor. And as expected, the modulated wavefront sensor has the um, highest linear range um, relative to the other two. So once we calibrate them, we can test out um, a pupil plane turbulence. 
So it's, uh, this is the pupil plane phase shown. It evolves. Um, this is the turbulence at the tip of the pyramid, the reimaged pupil planes, and the compensation. And it shows a low residual, giving a strel of 0.84. So uh, the idea is to test it for various regimes and compare the modulated, the fixed, and the shock hartman wavefront sensor. So this uh, pupil plane phase is shown for a D over R naught of 6.9. And um, the blue curve, and so these are strel plots, um, and these are closed loop iterations. So it shows that the modulated pyramid wavefront sensor is shown in blue, the fixed is shown in red, and the shock hartman is shown in yellow. And you can see that the modulated um, reaches a higher strel at uh, fewer number of iterations. And it takes um, several more iterations for the fixed and um, fixed pyramid to catch up. The shack hartman starts out well, but um, doesn't quite reach as high as um, doesn't benefit as much from the closed loop as the modulated. So then we test this for uh, stronger turbulence. So this is the D of R naught of 10. And uh, the same kind of plot showing Strel versus the closed loop iteration. And we see the same trend. Um, so these, the next step then is to uh, test it out for a three-sided pyramid wavefront sensor. This effort is happening with our collaborators at University of Arizona. Um, Lauren Schatz, um, a PhD student, has, um, oops, sorry, has um, uh, actually uh, a, a Three-sided pyramid has been fabricated and is that in the lab. And um, so I'll play the movie of the turbulence going through the th show, being shown in the three reimaged pupils. And this shows two to ten Zernike modes shown at the tip of the pyramid and then the uh, reimaged pupil. In uh, the December SPIE, you can expect to see um, closed loop um, operation. Uh, from their laboratory test bed. So stay tuned for that. So at the Starfire optical range, um, the comparison test bed will include an atmospheric turbulence simulator. And um, so this is the design for the uh, reflective turbulence simulator so that we can gauge, um, drive in any turbulence parameter. And the idea is to be able to close the loop on um, the shock hartman wavefront sensor, in turn, the nonlinear curvature wavefront sensor, and the three-sided pyramid wavefront sensor. And this is just showing where the input of the, uh, of the prism. And um, so hopefully um, soon we will be able to um, get closed loop results in the laboratory um, on each of the wavefront sensor and compare them for different turbulence regimes. Um, and I'll leave you with um, Simulated simulation of our closed loop AO system, um, which will be implemented on, in the lab. And I'll take the question. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mala. I like the, the video at the end. It's fun to see these things actually working. Um, I think while we, we wait for questions uh, on the Slack, I have a question. I should know the answer, but I don't. Um, can you tell us why um, you have uh, begun this investigation as a team into a three-sided pyramid wavefront sensor over a four-sided? Is what are, the, what are the advantages of doing a three-sided pyramid instead of a four? Yes, so we already know that um, the pyramid over a shock hartman utilizes the full spatial coherence of the pupil, allows more sensitivity to particularly low order modes. And now the objective of going from four-sided to three-sided is to use um, benefit from SNR, so you're distributing light over fewer pupils, um, okay. and to benefit, um, benefit the SNR advantage to get high contrast images. So, and maybe this is outside of the scope of your talk, out of curiosity, is a three-sided pyramid harder to manufacture than a four-sided no. or is, is the, no. uh, not any more difficult? It's actually easier. Um, okay. So that was one of the driving forces because it's uh, really hard to get um, a four-sided tip, precise four-sided tip, mm -hmm. and it's easier to get, you know, the edge of a cube, for instance. Yeah. So. Nice, very cool. An easier fabrication. Okay. Well, thank you, Mala. Um, we have uh, a few minutes if anybody else has any questions for Mala. Uh, 